Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, and we have Bachelor in Paradise news for you this Friday morning. Happy Friday, everybody. Just several days away to the Katie Thurston season premiere of Bachelor in Paradise, which I'll be covering with a pre-episode live stream and a post-episode live stream. So subscribe to my channel for all of that content. But in the meantime, we have Bachelor in Paradise news, as reported here. Sarah Highland and Wells Adams are also co-hosting Bachelor in Paradise, as was reported Earlier this week, David Spade is replacing Chris Harrison on Bachelor in Paradise. Now, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Chris Harrison is still stepping aside. The Bachelor producers are very much like the contestants themselves in which they don't want to commit to one person, okay? They're afraid, so they're just going to string us all along. Make a decision, producers. Figure it out. You want to stand by Chris? Stand by him. Don't just throw him in the side and, you know, get to him next year. He's not your, uh, you know, your old clothes. You're like, oh, we'll donate it later, and then you forget about it. You know, he's not going to let you forget about him. I'll tell you that much. So what they've done is they've essentially said, you know what? We're going to just bring in a bunch of celebrities, a bunch of, uh, you know, Bachelor fans that, that are, no, you know, have notoriety, and we're going to just uh, piecemeal this all together with different co-hosts, different guest hosts. So David Spade will be guest hosting several episodes. Sarah Hyland and Wells Adams will also be guest hosting several episodes of Bachelor in Paradise, which starts filming next week. We still don't know exactly who's going to be on the show, but if you've never watched the show, there's basically no theme, and it's just a bunch of random people show up to a bar and uh, try not to get in a fist fight under a palapa. I mean, that's just what happens. We watch it because it's summertime sweeps. There isn't much else going on, but uh, in the meantime, we do have Katie Thurston's season premiering in just a couple short days. So Reality Steve had posted this earlier today off yesterday's news of rotating hosts down in Mexico. Chelsea Handler was supposed to be one of the other ones along with David Spade, but it got pulled last minute. The only other one I know for sure going down to host are Wells and Sarah Highland. So the question is, why was Chelsea Handler pulled? Someone in the comments says, so someone as controversial as Chelsea Handler can host Bachelor in Paradise, but Chris Harrison can't? Ha ha. Okay. Well, you're not wrong. You don't, you know, you're not exactly wrong. She's obviously a very uh, edgy comedian and she's uh she said some horrid things in the past but in the name of funny and i think that's the main difference between her and chris harrison whether you want to excuse uh bad takes at humor or not she did it in the name of funny whereas chris harrison did it in the name of protecting the bachelor brand and protecting the bachelor producers he took one for the team there he tried to say wait hold on we're gonna wait and see what happens but he didn't do it with grace and tact that was needed to have that discussion and that's what I can imagine is where we pinpoint the mistake. Because it's always important to know exactly where someone went wrong. It wasn't that, you know, because a lot of people said, well, Chris Harrison said the same things that Emmanuel Acho did. Chris Harrison didn't have grace within that interview. Now, it's up to the public to decide if they think it's it's worthy of him getting uh, axed. It's up for the public to decide if they're going to watch the show. If he's not around, you just vote with your dollar just like everyone else does. That's how it works. But uh, clearly there was a misfire there. I think the best solution... For Chris Harrison, aside from hiring power attorney Brian Friedman, uh, don't you like that power re recapper there? Uh, but I think the best thing for Chris Harrison would be to go on Higher Learning Podcast with Rachel Lindsay and have a difficult and lengthy conversation about what what actually went down. Actually talk it out with Rachel Lindsay and you know do something more than just a three minute edited video. What's happening with Chris Harrison? is the same thing that happened with Rachel Kirk Connell. Let me explain. With Rachel Kirk Connell, they said, don't go to the media, just wait till after the final rose, we'll do it on air, because the Bachelor producers monetize that. They make all their money if they do it on where the ratings are, but what the Bachelor producers didn't realize is it's 2021, there's people being killed in the streets, there's racial injustice, there's mass incarcerations on an extended level. To, there's all these issues that are happening that have just kind of hit this boiling point. So by waiting to... Uh, uh, to do this on After the Final Rose for them to monetize this uh, this um, ironic, if you will, uh, issue where Matt James, the first black lead, uh, falls in love with someone with a problematic racial past. Uh, they wanted to monetize that in After the Final Rose. They created a wildfire by stoking it and not, you know, in, in, in teasing it. Whoa, we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. Chris Harrison was on the front lines of that and he got burned and that's how it works. Now, they're trying to do the same thing with Chris Harrison. They're trying to say, yeah, I'll just don't talk to the media. Just go to Texas, hang out, hang out. Well, how far are they going to kick the can down the road before Chris Harrison does what Rachel Kirk Connell does, goes off script and says, you know what? This is baloney. This is my story, and I'm going to tell it. 
Now, I'm not saying I agree with Chris Harrison, but you know, a lot of people say, well, he should just take the money he's made and go off into the sunset. Listen, folks, that's just not how it works. So we'll see what happens. It will be interesting to say the least. So we have Sarah Hyland, uh, star of Modern Family, and Wells Adams. How the hell did these two ever get together? What's the deal with them? You know what I mean? He was a radio DJ, in, in the old disc jockey, if you will. Uh, he's got the height of a, uh, 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 of a equestrian jockey. Is that the right term? I don't know. Don't height shame, Dave. Sorry about that. Uh, and it, no, you know, I, I don't even think he's short. He just kind of looks small. You know what I mean? It's because he's got nice features. All right. So anyway, uh, let's find out how they actually got together. It looks like we have a nice case of sliding into the DMs, which is the romantic modern day way of showing up with the stereo on top of your head and playing a song. This is just sliding into the DMs. See, before you'd have to dress up and get a nice boom box and double D as, you know, batteries. And if you're too young to, you, why, why don't you just use your JBL speaker that's rechargeable? Shut up, Trisha. That's not how it worked in the 90s or 80s or whatever, okay? All right. So, um, you know, you just have to show up and now you can just, uh, you know, slide a DM while you're on the shitter. You know what I mean? So uh, the, here's a timeline of their relationship. Well, isn't that nice? They got the ring. They got this, you know, looking cute. They're at the, you know, they, they, they're, oh, they're cross-dressing. Whatever floats your boat there, Wells. For the right reasons, Sarah Hyland and Wells Adams are proof that Instagram can be the beginning of a beautiful love story. Us Weekly exclusively revealed that the Modern Family star and the Bachelor in Paradise bartender were dating in October 2017. Months later, Highland shared that the twosome met over social media. Oh boy, the old Instagram hookup. Have you seen those memes of slide into the DMs? That, he slid into my DMs, the actress explained on Jimmy Kimmel Live in January 2018. I thought he was funny and he was a fan of my show. I saw him as the bartender and I was like, that's really cute, make me a drink. Highland referred to Adam's decision to privately message her as the perfect balance of sexy but not aggressive. Well, that's good to know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the perfect balance of sexy and not aggressive is when the person's attracted to you. All right, listen, that's the truth. That's the difference between creepy and charming. If they're into you, it's a romantic love story. It's the notebook. If they're not into you, it's like this psycho's building a barn for me and I'm with somebody else. You know what I mean? If you're a bird, I'm a bird. If those birds have attraction to each other. If you're a bird and I'm a hawk with a cross eye, you're not going to get much of a shot. Listen, that's the way it is, folks. It's the law of attraction. Nothing wrong with cross eyes there. Um, okay. Uh, geez, I'm just constantly afraid of offending somebody. Highland referred to Adam's decision as sexy but not aggressive. I was single. That'd be a nice, like, podcast title. Hey, it's Dave Neal on Sexy But Not Aggressive. <laughs> it's where I just try to dress nice and apologize. It's Friday. I was single, obviously, and was like, this is really awesome. You're being very forward, she said at the time, but very confident and sexy, and I liked that. The twosome took the next step in their relationship during the summer of 2018 when they decided to move in together in Los Angeles. Highland later credited Adams for helping her cope with, uh, with, with kidney dysplasia, a debilitating illness that once led her to contemplate suicide. Wow, that got dark. He's seen me at my worst, she told Self Magazine in December 2018. I think that's why I feel the most beautiful in his eyes, because he still finds me beautiful after seeing all that. It was a really intimate start to a relationship to have to go through those hurdles at the very, very, very beginning when you're just even getting to know a person. So kidney dysplasia, does that mean she was like, um, you know, getting really sick? I um, I got food poisoning uh, over the, uh, a couple months ago, actually, and Tasha, my fiance and I, lived in a studio apartment, and she saw me literally lose about 15 pounds in one day in, in body fluid and I tell you what for her to still love me after that you know check mark to you Tasha because when it, when you've seen someone at their worst you get you do deserve them at their best looking at you Marilyn she was robbed JFK was in on it all right um, by robbed I mean they uh, silenced her when she was going to release a tell-all book but that's the Kennedys that's my neck of the woods I look like a poor man's Kennedy <laughs> I look like the batch I'm the Kennedy of the bachelor recapper world uh, um, imagine having a Robert Kennedy, the ugly one. I know people comment. He actually wasn't that bad looking. Shut up. I'm making fun of me. Let me do it. Imagine having a vital organ replaced. Imagine having 16 surgeries, going to hundreds of doctors visits and taking thousands of pills. Imagine losing crazy uh, weight because of dialysis, medication, side effects, and stress. Then imagine having to do it all over again. This time, keeping it quiet while you recovered all while trolls on the internet judged you for your appearance. The podcast host told Us Weekly exclusively of Highland's health journey at the time. Oh, and throw in filming the funniest show on TV and executive producing and starring in a movie and never breaking down and never losing it. I know Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman on film, but Sarah is the real life version. Wow. 
That's a, that's a nice come up by your guy. Adams and Highland got engaged in July 2019. That can't eat, can't sleep, reach for the stars, over the fence, World Series kind of stuff. The comedy actors captioned a photo from the beach proposal, quoting the 1995 film It Takes Two. Scroll through to revisit their love story. Oh, so here they are. This is a nice uh, scene that they have there from, uh, what's, the, what's the show, uh, Stranger Things? Is that what that is? They, uh, you know, oh yeah, no, no one had the idea to do this as a Halloween costume. None at all. Let's see if I can get any more photos here. I don't know if this is going to go through. We might not be able to scroll through here because, uh, you know, these are garbage websites. Oh, here it is. So uh, we just go right down. A nice black and white photo of them. Yeah, we're going to really enjoy. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. I think we're going to really enjoy, that's a dog, seeing them uh, as co-hosts. I'm surprised she's doing this. Uh, uh, she has an estimated net worth of $14 million. And uh, it, how old does that make her? Born in 1990. Jeez, boy. 31. All right, folks. Uh, turning 31 this year. Uh, doing the math right. So she's 30. And how old is Wells? I'm assuming he's around 35. Good. You know what? She just, isn't this great? Doesn't she seem like she's always been 16 because she's just like a p- petite person? Um, she's been in Veronica Mars. She was on Modern Family for 11 years. That's ridiculous. So she was on Modern Family starting in 2009. So she was, what, 19? Did I do the math right? Something like that. Dirty Dancing, the TV movie. I'll take any version of Dirty Dancing at this point. If you, uh, what's it? Don't, no one puts, uh, no one puts Wells in the corner, right? Isn't that how it goes? Uh, unless that's the thing you're into. Um, and then you got some weird, like, uh, you know, the older you get, the older you get, if you're a New York actor, you get the special victims unit where you just play a dead body. We've all done it. One life to live. Did the soaps. All my children. Another soap. Uh, yeah, a lot, lot going on there. Another world. Another soap. A tall winter's tale. Private parts. Howard's daughter. Oh, she played Howard. That's funny. She played uh, uh, Howard's daughter in Private Parts. Wow, that's a real old credit. So how old was that? 1997. So she was only seven years old when she was getting pretty substantial uh, gigs there. So anyway, so clearly she's doing this because it's a chance to hang out with her hubby and uh, be a part of a show that she loves. I mean, clearly she doesn't need the work. God knows I don't get paid too much. And if you want to check out what Bachelor in Paradise contestants are getting paid, go back a few videos. I covered the Trading Secrets podcast, which is Jason Tartik's podcast. He and Dean Ungler talked about Bachelor in Paradise where they were offered 400. They tried renegotiating it, uh, renegotiating it, and that's a daily rate. So um, we get into all of that. Lots of content out there. Let me know what you guys think. If you want more content, you just want to find a way to support your boy Dave over here and you're enjoying a nice paycheck on a Friday, I've got a Patreon, which is a private monthly membership. You can sign up for one month and then just not sign up again if that's what you want to do. And you can get all of my past episodes, over 100 of them. My latest one, Prepping for Bachelorette Season, plus some behind the scenes on buying a couch during a Bachelor breaking news story. And special alert to you guys, we bought the couch. I'm going to share this with you guys. It doesn't fit through the door. We bought a couch we can't return for way more money than I would have wanted to spend. We, we ripped it and it doesn't fit through the door. I'm going to share with you guys on the Patreon only what I'm going to do this afternoon to get it inside. I have a plan, guys. I'm going to share it on the Patreon only because I think my landlord follows my YouTube and I don't. I'm just kidding, but check check it out on the Patreon. That's where you want to go see it. Anyway, so that's over there. You can go see all of that. I even show my old live streams on there and some other breaking stars. So that's all on the Patreon. You can go get that over there if you would like it. Yeah, there's a private Snapchat. It's called Lens on the Patreon where I can just share things with you that, you know, might not be comfortable sharing with public. Tasha had a couple amazing auditions this week. Um, she's ready to shoot for the stars. Big time movie, big time TV show. So fingers crossed. Give her your positive energy. We're wishing her the best. Uh, just getting the audition and nailing it is such an achievement. So we're hoping she hears some yeses in her life. And thank you guys for providing me with a yes, which is a successful YouTube channel. I appreciate all of you. You know, 65% of people that watch my channel aren't subscribed yet. That's a fact. So if you uh, thought you were subscribed and you're not, go do yourselves a little check and see if you are subscribed. The best thing you can do for me is watch the content, leave a comment, and give it a like. So thank you guys so much for that. And I will be here later this afternoon with more stories after I uh, put that couch where it belongs. All right, bye. Bye, guys.